Welcome everybody here. It's great to see so many smiling faces this morning. Uh, happy Father's Day to everyone. Uh, the fathers, the stepfathers, the grandfathers, even if you don't have children, um, there's definitely someone in your life that looks up to you, so thank you for everything that you do. Uh, a couple announcements this morning. June 30th, which is a week from Tuesday, is the last day to sign up for the kids' summer camps at Camp Shiloh down in Marion. So if you have kids that are interested in going, uh, make sure that you pick up a registration form and a health form out there on the coffee bar. Uh, and those forms need to be returned along with the payments by June 30th. Uh, we are still collecting stuffed animals. Uh, up until July 1st, so far they've collected 410 stuffed animals. So if you still have some uh, new or gently used stuffed animals that you'd like to uh, re-gift to someone else, uh, bring those in. Uh, they've currently collected 410, and so we'd love to see that number get up to like five or 600. Uh, starting in July, the mission service will be moving to the second Sunday, um, and the first one, which would be uh, July 12th, will be a bonfire out at Paul and Brittany's house. Uh, it's going to start at 6 o'clock, but you can show up earlier if you want to. Uh, and talk to Brittany if you want to help bring in anything, whether it's hot dogs, buns, uh, or s'mores, uh, they're, as they're going to have a campfire out there uh, for the mission service that night. And then the game night will be resuming the third Sunday in July as well. So I guess that means I finally have to relinquish the first place Euchre trophy. Well, maybe. We'll see. Um, but come out and join us again for uh, game night the third Sunday in July, starting at 6 o'clock. Good morning. good morning. It's good to see these pews get fuller and fuller every Sunday. It's such a blessing. Amen. So let's give our praise to the Lord. Do you want to start us off, Terry? <laughs> Let's give, Let's give our praise to the Lord. Let's give our praise to the Lord. Let's be a one accord and give our praise to the Lord. Well, we just can't afford well, not to praise the Lord. Come on and worship the King. Let's give our praise to the Lord. Let's give our praise to the Lord. You know we won't be ignored.
Remember how I'm always saying that we're a church that believes in the power of prayer? I just encourage you, let's continue to worship God this morning, and let's keep them in our thoughts and our prayers as they're walking through whatever's happening. I have limited information, but I wanted us as a church to pray right now. Um, if you don't know, Dennis is a, a board member of our church. Angie does a lot of stuff for us with finances. Not that that makes them better than anyone else, but they are servants to Christ, and so are we, and we are called to lift each other up in prayer, and so that's what we did, and I, I ask you to continue to do that as we worship this morning, okay? Um, I probably wouldn't rush them. Just a little advice. I probably wouldn't rush them with a bunch of text messages after service. Uh, just pray, okay? Just pray. Give them some space and some time right now. Uh, reach out whenever the Lord tells you, but yeah, okay? Let's, let's stand again. Let's worship. Let's continue to worship. To be washed 
thank you for Father's Day. Uh, I thank you for what it's meant to me, especially this year. Uh, I thank you that I was able to meet my grandson for the first time. I thank you for just all the fathers out there. And uh, Lord, I ask you to be with the ones that have struggled. That you would lift them up to you, Lord. That's why we're here. Lord, you make us the men that we need to be. We thank you for that. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Can, we, uh, can we cut the live feed again? Uh,
sometimes I struggle to find a song to, to present. And this, this song really spoke to me last week. And I was thinking, you know, it's Father's Day. Um, there needs to be something that really just says, you know, our father's great. And uh, I heard this song, and it brought me to tears because, you know, no matter what we do, what we go through, we can always run to him for anything. Mm-hmm. And he's always there for us to listen. So let's, let's run to the Father. If anyone needs to run to the Father through the altars, by, by all means.
matter what, we can always run to you. We can always count on you, and you'll be there, Lord. And uh, it's bitter news this morning, Lord, but it's, it's a blessing to hear that you know, the kingdom gained another child. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the church has accepted another family and continued blessings. We love you, Lord. Be with Travis as he presents the message. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What a roller coaster of emotions this morning. Um, but you know, that's what I love about church. You know, that's what I love about, I mean, we're the church. It's what I love about worshiping God. It's what I love about living in the spirit. It's what I love about being in the center of God's will. Like we can lay out broken before him. We could stay at the altar as long as we want. We can stay in, the, in a spirit of prayer for, for the entire time because he loves us. Amen? You know, church doesn't have to look the same every Sunday. And, and that's what I love about us. We're willing to walk and step with, a, with whatever the Spirit has for us. Because that's when the Spirit speaks. And that's when the Spirit moves. And so we've hit almost every emotion this morning, so maybe I can help you giggle a little bit this morning with what I'm about to do. Not to change the mood, but it's, it's kind of some of the stuff I had today. But um, uh, how many of you kids in here... Uh, can say exactly what is in your father's toolbox. Can you, can you tell me what are some of the things that are in your dad's toolbox? How, okay, how about this? How many of your dads have nice, neat, orderly toolboxes? Or does it look like mine right now? That's just, <laughs> you know, Justine finds a wrench, and then I find it in a drunk drawer. Where'd my wrench go? I didn't touch your wrench. And it's in the drunk drawer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, anyway, so I brought um, a toolbox in with me this morning, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. I have some, some different things that I want to help you help illustrate uh, what's in a dad's toolbox and some of the things he can use them for. And so the first thing we have here uh, is an adjustable wrench. Myron, have you ever used one of these? Have you ever used an adjustable wrench, a crescent wrench? Well, here, this, when I look at this, what I see is that um, fathers must be flexible and, and able to adapt to any situation that arises. And that's why the adjustable wrench can adapt to any different situation of bolts, usually, usually. And so I got to thinking, one of the main passages we have today is Ephesians 6, uh, chapter 4. Uh, in the New Living Translation, it says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. And, and whoa, we're going to dig into that. Uh, I, hey, don't laugh when I mess up. Laugh at the, laugh at the jokes, okay? <laughs> no. All right. And so the next thing I have here that I brought with us, uh, this is something that I have to be reminded of a lot. Uh, whose dad has a level? Who knows what a level is? <laughs> I was talking to the kids, Lori. <laughs> So uh, what I'm often reminded is that I, I got to be kind of, you know, level-headed, right? And, and, so, <laughs> and so that's what fathers really have to be. They have to be level-headed. How many of us in here would say this morning that we have a dad who is always level-headed? I was wondering if he was going to suck up on Father's Day. I, I didn't know, right? Uh, Proverbs 20, verse 7 says this. Uh, and listen, listen fathers. Uh, this is the New King James Version. A righteous man walks in, in, in his integrity uh, his children, and sorry, the righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him because of the integrity he displays, because of the, the level-headedness in tough situations, uh, okay? And so um, the next thing I have for us here, here, hold that. <laughs> the next thing I have for us here uh, is, is a clamp. How many dads, how many kids in here know of their dad's clamps? Does dad have a lot of clamps to hold things together? Any dads do woodworking? Those are some pretty important... <laughs> That was a little strong. That was not intended. Uh, a little, this is a big clamp. But here's the thing. Fathers must be able to hold things together. Fathers, you ever feel like that? That it's so hard to hold things together that we just wish we had a big clamp for life? I, I mean, I know I do. Okay, I, I really do know I do. Uh, here's one of my favorite ones. Thank you. Here's one of my favorite ones. Uh, how many of us have shop rags in our, in our garage, right? These are a must-have. Any dads not have shop rags? Any dad here not have shop rags in their garage? Ryan, you don't have a shop rag? There you go. <laughs> well, the reason why uh, we need shop rags is because dads are not perfect, right? That's why I gave it to Ryan. And so <laughs> uh, we must be ready to clean up the messes that we 
sometimes make, right, Ryan? Just sometimes, not all, just sometimes, okay? Uh, here's another really good one. Uh, you might not get this one, I, I don't know, but um, I was thinking I had an extension cord. That's usually not in my toolbox, but it is today. And so the reason why I use the extension cord is because fathers must be able to stretch. I didn't have a bungee cord. That's what I was going to use. They must be able to stretch, though, stretch across the distance. They need to be able to stretch and do a lot of different things. That's what dads need to be able to do. Oh, here's a real good one. Wait a second. How did, how did this get in here? Oh, I know how that got in there because uh, fathers must put mothers first, right? <laughs> you know, it's got to, we want to smell good for you, right? But listen to this. There's some seriousness to it. Oh, this one, I brought the one I used, too. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, everyone knows your pastor sweats, so we need to keep that up here. No. Uh, Ephesians 5.25 says this. Uh, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. Listen, one of the best things a dad can give his children is knowledge that he loves their mother. Okay? That's one of the best gifts a dad can give. Here, we've got to move along here. The next thing we have is, is some pliers. Because a father must be able to get a grip, and he must be able to hold on when everyone else is losing theirs. <laughs> We've got to be able to hold on to our grip when everyone else in the family is losing theirs. And here's what I mean. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, and in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Two more, two more. Man, this mic. Rubber mallet, right? Why would a dad have a rubber mallet today on Father's Day? Well, here's why. Because fathers must be able to do some persuasion without doing damage. Persuasion without doing damage. Who doesn't have a hammer? No. <laughs> Titus chapter 3, verse 1 and 2 says, Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing humility to all men. And here's the last thing that should be in every toolbox, or at least with every dad, a Bible. You know why? It's life's blueprint. This is life's blueprint. It shows us how to be a good dad. And we're going to talk about that today. Proverbs 4.1 says this, My children, listen when your father corrects you and pay attention and learn good judgment. That's why this is life's blueprint. Okay, let's get on to the message today. So this morning I want to talk to you about how to be a real good dad. Okay, see what I did there? And, and so, uh, you know, confession uh, this don't really have a lot to do with fishing today. I just thought that was really cool. And my title was already How to Be a Great Dad. So, yeah, so I'm a fisherman, so I threw that in there. Terry loves it. He's a huge fisherman. We talked about it this morning. He, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, turn with me in your Bibles. Uh, the main passage today is going to be Psalms 103, 13. And we'll, we'll be there in a little bit. But um, I want to talk about the importance of being a real great dad. Check this out. There was once a young mother, oh man, there was once a young mother who went down to the nursery at the hospital and she found her husband looking down at the newborn baby. Scott, did this happen with you? Did you, did you break away and go down and look at baby Colt when no one else was around? Did you do that? Or is that still a thing it was when we had our last one? With Lily, okay. So you'll get, you'll get this, Scott, okay? Listen to me, right? So imagine Scott, right? All right, he's down there. He's staring into this, this, this window, this nursery. He's, he's seeing his, his son, man, his first son, just, just so beautifully and peacefully just sleeping. And, and then imagine Emily coming up behind him, you know, and just kind of like noticing him off at a distance, you know? And she's just like so mesmerized that she has such an awesome husband and a dad that he is just so just peering into the life of their son and just, just constantly contemplating everything he's going to be when he grows up, right? That's what you're doing, right? So deep, you know, philosopher, so deep, right? And, and then she, she walks up behind Scott, and she puts her, her arms in his, and she's just, I mean, she's just full of love. So it's just oozing out of her right now. And she goes, honey, what are you thinking about? And Scott, such a deep thinker, he just goes, you know, I just don't understand how they made that crib for $89.95. You know, I just... <laughs> I just don't guess. That's cherry wood right there. I don't know. I can't get 
<laughs> Fathers uh, are interesting, interesting creatures, aren't they? Okay. Uh, so here's some humorous words uh, that was titled, someone else wrote, these aren't my words, but it's called The World According to Dad. I shared some of this stuff about mothers on Mother's Day, but here's some things that, that all dads, I think, at some point have said. So here's what I want to do. Have a little bit of fun. We're going to exercise, all right? <laughs> Not really. If your dad has said one of these things, just raise your hand and put it back down, okay? Can we do that? There's only like 99 things. We'll be here to lunch. And so, <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, here's the first thing. This is going to hurt you a lot more than it's going to hurt me. All right, dads say that, okay? Um, <laughs> how about this one? Quiet, I'm watching the ball game. Yeah, I've said that too, yeah. Um, or uh, don't forget to check the oil, right? Or, or bring back all the change. Caps, all caps, all, all in all caps. How should I know? Ask your mother. No, I've never said that. I mean, I know it all, right? It's <laughs> uh, number six, uh, I'm not made out of money, you know, right, Gavin? Yeah, hey, put your hand down. <laughs> uh, when I was your age, I've never said this. When I was your age, I walked to school five miles both ways, uphill, in the snow, barefoot. Whose dad said that And back in my day? How about just this? Whose dad said back in my day? <laughs> I just added one. Or how about this? I, I say this to my kids all the time, especially when it comes to church. I always say, you're going to go and you're going to have fun, <laughs> whether you like it or not, you know. Oh, man. Or when it's about halfway through a season of some sport they wanted to do so bad and they don't. Uh, who pays the bills around here anyways, right? Uh, Mom does. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, that's, that's a diss on me, not her. <laughs> uh, hey, if you break your leg, don't come running to me, right? Uh, <laughs> don't, put your, don't put your feet on the furniture. Or your mother will kill you and probably me. Uh, number 12, uh, get down from there before you hurt yourself. On second thought, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, keep those hands. We don't need to tell people about that. <laughs> uh, uh, quit playing with your food. Uh, be quiet. Can't you see? I'm trying to think. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Uh, uh, why? Because I said so. That's why. Right? Everybody in here, moms too have said that, right? Uh, or how about this one? I say this one all the time. Uh, you better get this junk picked up before I come back in here than to never go back in there because I'm watching the game, right? You know? <laughs> um, and then the last one is this. Uh, when they try to come in and steal the TV remote, I'm not sleeping, I was just resting my eyes. Right? Okay. That's funny. Now, here are four things you will never, four things, you'll never hear a dad say. Never. Here's the credit card and the keys to my car. Have fun. Go crazy. Never. Uh, your mother and I are going away for a weekend. Maybe you should call up some friends and have a party. Yeah, that ain't happening. Or, <laughs> why do you want to get a job for? I make plenty of money for you to spend. All right? And how about this one? Well, how about that? I'm lost. I better go ask for directions. <laughs> Those are things you will never hear a dad say. And on that last one, if you do hear your dad say that, we'll celebrate him next Mother's Day, okay? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyways, uh, there's always been a need for real great dads. You know, we may think they're weird because they wear socks with their sandals or they wear jorts. Uh, and I wore jorts till a year ago and found out they're, they're awkward. Uh, I don't know. If you know what jorts are, uh, Google it. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, dads are so essential in the home today. And so with that being said, I want us to look at what the Bible has to say about how to be a great dad. Number one is this. Um, to be a great dad, a great dad loves his children. Psalms 103.13 says, The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. When we look at this word um, uh, compassionate in the Bible, it has this meaning of 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 love so deep and, and so honest and so pure that they, they nurture and they cher cherish their children. And, and that's exactly what dads should be doing. They should love their child and they should nurture their child and they should raise them up in the ways of the Lord. And, and moms, don't think you're off the hook. We just talked about you a couple months ago, okay? You're not off the hook. You're to love your kids too. But here's the problem. Far too many dads are not doing this. And it's sad. Far too many dads are not there. And, and that leads me uh, to the next one here. Uh, and number two, the Bible says to be a real great dad is that a great dad is fair to his children. 
So let's look at that Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, just the first part. It says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. You know, one of my favorite translations uses the word exasperate. It's the NIV. It uses the word exasperate for provoke. And, and, and it's the only translation that I can really find in the midst, maybe out of 10 that I look at, that, that uses that word. And it has this, this meaning to, to not wear them out right? To not constantly nag them, to not constantly be breathing down their neck, to not constantly be, be on them all the time, to not make them hostile, to treat them fairly. It kind of takes away the whole, that's what I said, that's why, or why, you know, we need to treat them fairly. But here's the thing, young ones, I want you to listen, because I'm going to talk, I'm going to address you in a second. It doesn't mean we don't discipline our kids. It doesn't mean that at all. We just don't unfairly discipline them or we just don't out of haste and anger and wrath punish them maybe we need to take about 60 seconds to walk away before we pull the belt through the loops you know what I mean uh, and I'm guilty of that too but we got to stop and we got to think and and we got to not provoke our children to anger by the way we treat them and for my young ones that are in here it looks like a lot of my oh I have a teen back there all right yeah we got some young ones all the way in the back and Gavin and Jensen here and oh there's a lot more in here you guys are just like blending in you guys look like such adults <laughs> Ethan all you guys yeah uh, Terry one of my teens you know so I don't know you're I'm picking on you today and I don't know why I love you man uh, <laughs> I know why it's easy but anyways <laughs> listen if you do something that you know you're not supposed to do and it deserves discipline you, you need to suck it up and just take your medicine right and I mean discipline and, and here's the thing you, you may not like it but you, you need to take it, right? We need to own up to the things that we do. But on, on the reverse side, if we have a father, a parent, some mother, that's handling it in a proper way and not provoking us to anger, not mistreating us, not doing all those things, it, it makes that easy. It's give and take. We need to obey. And here, number three, here's a big one, the last part of verse four, but it says, a great dad takes the time that's huge. That's what kids need most of. Yes, they need your love, but they need your time. And they need your time to train them and to instruct your children. Let's look at that. It says in the last part of verse 4, Rather bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. What instruction are you talking about? I'm not talking about how to put together the bicycle, you know, on their birthday. I'm talking about spiritual and moral instructions in their life. Here's a better way to put it. You need to teach your children absolute truth. Jesus Christ and the word of God, the living and the written word of God, is absolute truth. And I've said some harsh statements before about it. Like if, if you come across something in the Bible that you don't like, <laughs> change your opinion, right? You know, I mean, because God's word is absolute truth. We need to teach our children the difference between right and wrong, between good and and evil between heaven and there's another counterpart called hell that doesn't get talked about much we need to teach our children about that and we need to teach our kids about morality and immorality and for my young ones here again today i'm picking on you as well as long as you live in your parents home your only response should be i'm going to obey you i may not always like it i may not always agree with it I may not like what pastor's preaching this morning, but I understand I'm the child and you're the parents. And here's the thing. Guys, listen. Lily, you listening? All my young, young teenagers in here and younger ones. Ethan, I know you're listening. That's why you're smiling. If you want to please and obey God, you can start by obeying your parents. Honor your mother and your father. Honor them. And so as we look at those three, just three of many great responsibilities of great dads, church, can you see why it's so important that dads be the dads they were created to be? That dads be the dads that they were meant to be? That dads can maybe take today and say, today is going to be day one. I'm going to make some changes if needed. Guys, listen, here's why I write this, because we have a generation of young people who don't know right from left. Right? They don't know right from wrong. They don't, they, they don't know anything. And, and a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times, it's because they don't or didn't have father, a fatherly influence in their life. That's, sometimes that's a lot of it. And I want you to know, dads can be absent while they're present. Okay? 
It's very real. They don't have fathers who love them. You know, they don't have fathers who treated them fairly and didn't abuse them physically, mentally, emotionally, who taught them right from wrong. We have too many young people today who have a distorted view of their godly father because their relationship with their earthly father is a wreck. It's a mess. And, and, and they, they just don't, they don't understand. When they think father, it becomes a negative thing to think of God as a father. And you know, one of the greatest things about all this is, is that it's so hard. The greatest thing is that God is a father to us. And it's so hard for our young ones to see that God is a loving and patient and merciful God, father, when their father's not. Does that make sense? It's like, hey, like I may be 10 or 13 or whatever age it is, but this isn't adding up. Something's not right here. This is how my dad treats me or my dad's never here or whatever it is. I don't, want no, I don't need another dad, you know? And then they, they never learn to cry out, Abba, Daddy, Abba, Father. And so one of the greatest characteristics to me, the thing that I love most about God is that he's a father to me. I have two fathers. You have two fathers, an earthly father and a heavenly father. And here are some truths about our heavenly father, our God. Number one, or A, number A. <laughs> I know, I was just kidding. Um, usually I use numbers. I don't know why I use letters today. Um, this is amazing. God is always going to be around. We ha I just talked about dads who aren't around, but God is always going to be around. Uh, Joshua uh, 1.9 says, This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And, and, and that's just one passage that, that talks about how God will never leave us nor forsake us. He's, he's always going to be there even when you mess up, even when you think your mess up is so bad that he can't possibly bring you back. He's like, nope, I sent my son to die for that. Past, present, future. It's covered under the blood. Amen to that. That's an extra credit. Uh, the Holy Spirit gave me that this morning. It's truth. God's not going anywhere, church. He's not. Our Heavenly Father will always be there. He'll always be around. And here, here's some hard truths for, you guys think I'm talking to young ones this morning, but listen to what I'm about to say. He'll never walk out on us, and he'll never die. Some of us in here have lost our fathers at a young age. Maybe, I don't know. I, I don't know everyone's story. Maybe at an older age, it doesn't matter, but God is always going to be there. He is our constant hope. And here's the truth. When you feel or are alone, you have a hope that you can lean into and trust in all times and all situations, and that's God the Father. Number B, <laughs> he is a father to the fatherless, a defender of of widows. Psalm 65 8 says, Father to the fatherless, defender of widows. I just said that, right? But then it says, This is God whose dwelling is holy. Hang out with God. Hang out with God when we feel alone, when we feel separated, when we feel anxious. You know, the words fatherless or orphan, when I did a search, are only found in the Bible about 10 times. Isn't that crazy? And widow is only, excuse me, widow is only mentioned about 11 times in the Bible. And here's what's really cool about it, church. Listen, every time these words are being used in Scripture, it's in the context of God either looking out for them or warning people not to mess with them. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? God has a special place in his heart for children that live in a fatherless home. He really does. You know, and, and there are single moms who may not be a widow, but the father may not be around. And these moms need to understand that they have a great heavenly father in their corner. And you know, as a church, as a body of believers, we need to remember this. You know why? Because in my experience growing up, it's very unfortunate that a lot of single moms and fatherless homes are looked down upon. And as a church, we need to embrace God's love and concern in this area. Letter C. 
This is another great thing about God. This is what I love. He loves us just as much as he loves his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. You know, you know, we hear that in the scripture a lot. We know that when we, when we get saved, when we accept the free gift of salvation, when we accept Jesus Christ into our lives as Savior, uh, that, that God loves us when we're adopted into sonship, right? But God, he loves us just as he, much as he loved Jesus. Listen to what Jesus said in John 17, 23. He says, I have given them the glory you gave me. Jesus did not hoard his daddy. He gave it to us. He could have said, uh-uh, Dad. And they're sinners. They're, they're murderers. They're, they're, they're rapers. They're, they're, they're thieves. There's all this stuff. I'm not dying for them. But no, he said, ah, oh, God. He says, Daddy, he says, I have given them the glory you gave me so they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. And then he, 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 he prays. He says, May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. And, and, and I don't have it up here, but if you have your Bibles open, in verse 24, the very first word he uses in almost every translation is Father. Je- uh, Jesus uses the word Father six times just in that chapter to really illustrate that we have a loving, heavenly Father. Here's the thing, even when he disciplines us. Some people say, God doesn't discipline us. Well, let's see what scripture has to say about it. This is just one passage, Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. I don't have it up there for you, but just listen. It says, my child, don't reject the Lord's discipline and don't be upset when he corrects you. For the Lord corrects those he loves, just as a father corrects a child in whom he delights. Here's a promise. A father who disciplines you is a lot better (laughs) than a father who is absent or a father who doesn't. And and I know you're thinking, Pastor, did you just tell me to thank God that my dad grounded me this week? My boys just got ungrounded, right? Were you happy with me over it? Well, Scripture, it's not me. It's Scripture. It says says, you should rejoice that you got grounded. (laughs) Why? Dad, stop using us in scripture and sermons. <laughs> yeah, ouch. We'll talk later. <laughs> here, let me give you some money. No, I'm just kidding. We're not doing that. No. Um, okay, here, I'm going to wrap this up, okay? And we're, we're going to go, and we're going to have a wonderful day with our families. But here's the thing. Pastor, what does all this mean for me today? You know, mothers, you're sitting here on, on Father's Day, and you're thinking, oh, this is just about dads today, but I guess I'll go to church. I hope that's not what you were thinking. But here's the thing. First, we see that dads... Listen to me, dads. You are very crucial in the life of your child. Very crucial. Secondly, we learn that the ultimate example of true fatherhood, perfect fatherhood, is found only in our Heavenly Father. And thirdly, if we really want to know and, and how to be a real great dad, <laughs> we need to model after our Heavenly Father. And finally, here's an important truth. If your father's not around... God is with you. Our heavenly father is around when no one is. Listen to Psalms 27.10. It says, even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I pray that, that this Father's Day will be celebrated in a new perspective on what this weekend is really all about. Father, we give you glory and praise and honor for being our good, good Father. Lord, thank you for being a perfect example of love. Thank you for loving us. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you all. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Go home, celebrate your Father. Spend time with the Heavenly Father. We have a gift for you. If you're a, if you're a male over 18 years old, uh, we'll start there. And if there's any left over, the younger ones can have it. But we have a, a Father's Day gift for you. Uh, see Larry. God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs>